come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. You probably found us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, or somewhere, wherever it is. Please click the subscribe button, and like uh, the rest of our shows, you'll get a new one every week where we'll review some fantastic cinema. You'll get to hear from the internet radio superstars. Travis. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. (laughs) Every week we do this, and uh, we watch a movie, then we sit around and talk about it for you. So tonight, I chose the movie, and we watched Westworld from the year 1973. And this movie was directed by Michael Crichton, who you may know as the creator of ER. And? Jurassic Park. And? Rising Sun. And? Uh, Disclosure. Congo. Uh, (laughs) The writer of Twister. Uh, Way back in the day, he was, uh, so Michael Crichton's an interesting cat. Because he graduated from Harvard as in a, he was a medical student, and I'm not sure if he actually did time as a doctor. I got to go check this out. Right. But I think he had he has like a medical background, so he then became a writer. Just wrote a book about a doctor. Well, it was called the Andromeda Strain. Oh, oh that's right. So it was like a that. medical like look at a uh, space born virus coming to Earth. Yeah, he was always seen as the more intellectual fantasy. My brother was right. a big dinosaur guy, so my brother got really into the Jurassic Park thing when it happened. And... Rightfully so. Yeah. yeah. It's but, just... like, really into it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, when you see ER, Michael Crichton, it's like, okay, so he was using his medical background there. But, I mean, everything, like the Terminal Man, I think, was also his. And these two, Andromeda Strain and Terminal Man, had gotten turned into movies, and so for some reason, I mean, this is 1973, so, I mean, I don't you know how uh, movie making went. They were just like, hey, hey, you, you want to make a movie? It's like, <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah. This is, this is, well, these gosh are those, darn, I do. <laughs> these are those easy writer days, right? Where they threw all the, like, they thought we could only make Hello, Dolly. And, you know, uh, then when Easy Rider came out, they're like, fuck it. Who's got a camera and a three hundred thousand dollar budget, and you can make a movie? Like we will release this. It could be the next Easy Rider. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's just it's amazing to me, uh, you know. And again, I don't know what the guy actually went through, but that you could just kind of go from like medical profession to novelist to movie director, like in a very short. Well, look screen, at Stephen right? King. You yeah, know, I suppose as soon, right. Yeah, right. Maximum Back overdrive. in those days, as soon if they thought there was a. I mean, I'm sure Michael Crichton must have had maybe some writing for, like, did he write the screenplays for Terminal Man? Yeah. So then they're probably like, well, let's give him a shot at directing. That way it will be as close to his material or whatever, right? Like, half the time, like, I want to say, like, Clyde Barker, there was two movies made of his stuff. Before um, Hellraiser, those, well, yeah. it's Rawhead Rex and, and Transmutations. Yeah, Transmutations. Or... Until he's like, "Fuck it, I'll do it." Like, I will direct my own movie. <laughs> and somebody let him. That's what. I'm well, no, he had to like build <laughs> well, his own. But where Michael Crichton and Stephen King is totally like, I'm sure the studios are like, "Hey, man, we're gonna give you all this money. We're gonna you, you know the money. You get the coke." Make the movie. Yeah. <laughs> All the coke. Sure. Well, they they coke the I money. guess they didn't give Michael Crichton a whole lot of money. For this. Well, what I hear is the budget, half the budget was for the actors and the rest of it was for everything else. Sure. Because <laughs> he got uh, Yul Brenner, Richard Benjamin, and James Brolin. But in the opening title, it says Yul Brenner and uh, Richard Benjamin. So I think right. like James Brolin's like second fiddle in there. Well, Yul Brenner. Yul Brenner. He hadn't yeah. done the Amity. to put him on top, you know. Yeah. Well, I th- well, okay. Well, I guess we'll get to Yul Brenner. But Westworld, for those of you who are completely unaware, you, you know you've seen it if you're listening to the show, I right? You've heard of it. Yeah, it's an amusement park that uh, caters to uh, your every fantasy whim. You get to go to Westworld or future, not sorry, not future world, not future medieval world, yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. medieval world, <laughs> and world. Uh, Roman, Roman world, world. Uh, and live out your your fantasies. But of course, something goes completely wrong. Mm-hmm. This is so. This is the raw version of Jurassic or, Park, or or either that or like I'm like, did something happen at an amusement park that made national news like sometime mm. in the '60s that captured Michael Crichton's imagination? He's like, oh, what if you know? And then came up the dinosaur thing like after this. And just I don't know. There's always I'm sure if you look back and I've read of a couple instances where um, theme park stuff breaking down where you know accidents where people get killed like uh, I think there was a boating accident and I think Disney 
The one where it was still tied to the dock or something, mm. and it pulled it off and like shot through somebody's head. But did something happen to Michael Crichton? Because to revisit <laughs> this like topic again, does like first it. do Westworld and then to revisit <laughs> it with Jurassic Park, right. it's like, what is it about the... Well, well actually, doctor, I have a theory so, about this. But he has like a, an understanding of like complex machine, you know, m- systems, uh, biological yes. systems, and like what happens when they break down, just applying that to a bigger, right. you know, an amusement park as like a holistic body. Now, this is something that's not very, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a huge part of this movie, but I still can't look at it without thinking this. Do you think the reason we're doing this West World, Medieval World, Rome, Rome World, is this, I mean, I think it is, is this a parable for television, right? You're wa- you're watching Westerns, you're watching uh, Medieval, t- you know, you're escaping. You're using that to live your wildest fantasies out, right? Mm-hmm. And this what is, were the major movies they made back then, but Westerns? Western, and... the Earl Flynn movies, right. and Sandal, yeah, uh, sort sort of Sandal, Sandal movies. Yeah. That's why it's like, this represents the three biggest genres, or... The costume wanna... epics, the, or the, yes. the epic movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. plus the, the things... Big studio lo- pictures. Lots yeah. of violence and romance and, you know, things. So that's why it's like, this is a weird take on television. It's what we do with television. It's just making it into a physical world. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that's kind of like what, you know, I mean, in the movie, James Brolin's character says something like, well, it's, this is an authentic recreation of like 1870 or whatever, you know. But I'm sitting there going like, it's, this is a authentic recreation of a Hollywood version yeah, of a Western. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're what like they're living out their fantasies of what it's like to live in a movie, basically. Yeah. And I mean so much so you can actually read it the fact that they got <laughs> Gil Brenner, who was a star of one of the biggest westerns of all time mm-hmm. at that period of time, the Magnificent Seven, he's basically in the costume. Same costume that he wore in huh. the, you know, so it's like so you could read it as like they're going to an amusement park where the gunfighter character is played by you know the guy who's in the movie that they saw, yep. mm-hmm. <laughs> Magnificent be, Seven. Right? You know, mm-hmm. well, who else are you going to make a gunfighter look like? Right, draw. Well, yeah. yeah, they don't look like Clint Eastwood. John if there's right, a yeah. real Westworld. <laughs> John Wayne. Yeah, it could be John Wayne. <laughs> yeah. So, well, there's also this company called Delio Delos Delos, Delos, Delos yeah. which I'm kind of disappointed which that like, like as time has second. gone on that we that it's not regarded as high, high as like Wayland Utah right as a corporation or uh, Cyberdyner. <laughs> yes, because nothing happens right with because that. Westworld literally is, like that's the memorable name in this, uh, not the company who created it. Turn it on and turn it off. That didn't work. There's no more oxygen in this room. I mean, there's like <laughs> there's like they. I think that's my problem with this movie. I like the idea of this movie, right? I even like some of this movie. But uh, it seems like they don't have enough story to tell. Like, there's a scene where a There's scientist... a lot of running in the latter half of this movie. Oh, my, oh my God, God, yeah. And the so first much. half of the movie, I think, is even... I mean, just the whole, like... I don't know. There's the interesting idea of when they're at the bar and, you know... Uh, our main character guy is talking with a dude that's already been to Westworld a few times or something, right? Like, yeah. he's old, had at this, and this is a new guy. And when they're at the bar, and there's that idea of, like, this guy, you know, there's, like, a robot program to bump into you to start some shit, right? And it makes, oh, my God, the remarks, like, get this guy a bib. <laughs> he needs his mama. Me up. Yeah, yeah. And, with and drink, the dude's like, boy. kill him, fucking kill he does, him. He just goes, kill him. Yeah. And he has to work up that like that breaking down the reality of like you know I know I'm not strong enough, but this place is supposed to be designed to be my fantasy world, right? Where yeah. hopefully well, you're I'll fighting try your the morality of it, right? Yeah. I mean, but that's really what like there's a, a subcurrent to this movie where it's like the you know on the surface it's you get to go to this amusement park. And, you know, hang out and play cowboys and Indians or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what's really going on is, like, the idea that you can indulge every, your immoral uh, fantasies. Because the first things that they do, basically, all of these things are set up so you can kill whoever you want and fuck whoever you want. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, I mean, for a movie called Westworld, there's a surprising amount of people fucking, you know, I mean, like, that's all they want to do. Well, but even John Wayne only fell in love with the whores, right? Even, you know, that's part of the Western thing. Like, yeah, you know, you go fuck the whores, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that, but that's part of the adult vacation, right? The, yeah. I mean, the idea that they're selling, it's like, and the scene that you're talking about, it's like he has to kind of break that barrier 
in his head where it's like, if I was outside in the real world and somebody approaches me like this, you know, even though I want to kill him, I can't, you've, you've stamped that part of yourself down, you know, through civilization. Right. Mm-hmm. And here in Westworld, you're supposed to indulge it. Yeah. So he has to kind of like, okay, I am going to try and kill this guy, yeah. <laughs> you know, and he does. <laughs> and it's the old Brenner, this, this gunslinger. <laughs> That's what's interesting about the gunslinger character. I mean, I know he's on the cover art of the movie, and this is what you know everyone takes away after seeing it is the the memorable image. But he's really not a major character in like the first two thirds of the movie. He yeah. just kind of passes through. He gets he shows up, insults our guy at the uh, at the bar, gets killed. The next morning after they reset, because we get to see behind the scenes. We'll get into this later, but how they reset everything. Uh, the park people do. So yeah. the next morning it starts over again. And that gunslinger character goes straight for this guy. Like he remembers. Cause yeah, it, well, right? I think it's part of his program, right? Like, cause you see, these is it all, or is that, well, the no, there's all these scientist guys that are looking at every customer, every guest, these Dallas scientist guys are like, Oh, he's doing the. I mean, they're following exactly what their storyline is. They're like, oh, he wants to meet the queen. He Infinitely wants to, programmed into the queen. They're just like, hey, we're going to like, you know, they have to get into a fight. I mean. <laughs> and Let's start that bar fight. So I, I'm just thinking, like, if you're on this vacation, like, dude, this is your storyline. You fucking fought this guy and he's going to, if he sees you, he's going to have. You know, an opinion about you in but some you way. It's him. almost like a memory. Well, that's what's weird about this, right? Yeah. Is everybody restarts. So, like, yeah. that's why I think that's the glitch in the program. Because eventually, there is a problem that arises at the park. But it's it's kind of foreshadowed by the Yul Brenner character. The fact that even when he's reprogrammed and comes in the next day, he still recognizes oh, yeah, these guys yeah. and yeah. says, like, I you know feel unsatisfied that they got the better of me, and I'm gonna you know yeah. even though he shouldn't have weird. that memory. Yeah. I think he could he comes it. after them three days in a row. Yeah. He gets killed two days in a row, and on the third day... Because there's other guests there. You'd think if he's reprogrammed, he could be someone else's nemesis the next day, but he's not. He goes but, back to but them. But is there? This is my problem with Westworld. Is like, there's literally four humans in Westworld. They make it seem like, like it, any of these people could also be real people, but like in every image you see, there might be like a busload of people or like a little bit whatever. But you don't ever get the idea that there's a community of people in this thing because right. that's we why we lose the sheriff at some point, don't we? Yeah, yeah, he gets yeah, he just, killed or something. Does he get doesn't killed he? or just disappear uh, after the bar fight? He, I don't remember. I don't recall if. Yeah, I don't. Remember. He goes back into his. Uh, oh yeah, after the bar after fight. After the bar He's, fight, yeah. and then I don't see him anymore. No, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. what's weird. So about there, this yeah, you would like think four... like as soon as there's a breakdown, all these normal people would get together and be like, "Hey, what the fuck?" Yeah, mm-hmm. but there's not that. You really feel like there's literally two people in Westworld. <laughs> There's a dude in a medieval world, yeah, and yeah. there's like maybe and some. His we, wife went off to. Uh, we really don't go Rome to Rome world. world. Yeah, you're right. His wife goes off. The world. <laughs> so funny for the men. But yeah, we, yeah but the, we really the lax don't. morality of Roman world. Rome world is like the least of what we see in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like we yes. don't really see any of Rome uh, world. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit. Well, it's it's interesting at the very beginning of the movie where there's this uh, infomercial. Which I've seen like done in other movies that parody the kind of like nineteen eighty, you know, nineteen eighties yeah. or even this is the seventies like, like the travel right. video. Yeah. Yeah. But there's they're interviewing people coming off the hovercraft from Delos and they interview this one guy and they're like, you know, did you kill anyone there? And he's like, Oh, I kill lots of people. I but not real people. people. Yeah, oh, six feet. Not robot. real people. I'm pretty robots. sure they weren't real people. Yeah. No, I know they weren't real people. It's like that's where it's like. That's why. It's, how do you live yeah. in that it's environment about where the you're confused? They come out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. How do you rejoin society right. after you like? There, I killed people and I come back. That's why I don't kill people. I would put this movie in the vein of like Death Race 2000s. These movies talking about how like. We come up with these entertainment things or these government sports that desensitize us to murdering the, you know, weakest amongst us or whatever fuck. Mm-hmm. I would totally put that in. I mean, not that this movie doesn't ram it down your throat the way like Death Race 2000 does, but it's there, right? Yeah. It's just definitely there. I think this is one of those things where, you know, it's like the concept of this is probably, I mean, well, I'm going to say it's stronger than the execution of it only because 
it's the execution for the movie is so focused. Right. That I know that, you know, there's an HBO show that's probably debuting the week that you're hearing this, you know, yes. uh, that's going to unpack all this stuff. And I'm sure yes. that's the playground that they're going to have to Yeah, because we right. should have really had our, we should have had our John Hammond character. I yeah, mean, we so kind of tried to have a scientist that you get behind. But he's just the guy dealing with all the shit that's breaking down. It's all just like, uh, it's all just a, uh, uh, whatever, um, X, uh... Uh, no, uh, exposition. exposition. Oh, God damn it. We, we do well, drink. Travis this was show. throwing up there. Was I was like, oh, but like you said ex machina. <laughs> it's like, how could what? you get X, but not <laughs> like. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just really... exposition. It's just like, that's not right. Right. We don't see this the owner right. or the creator. Usually, in, uh, I guess, because, huh, well, I mean, what? That's the if, DNA. In Jurassic Park, right? Michael he's Crichton did it again. He was like, in this version, we're going to have the, uh, you know, the actual owner of the park reacting to the lawsuits that are going to happen, right. uh, you know. He also fixed the problem I have with uh, where's this community of people at this vacation? He's like, oh, it's a test run in Jurassic Park. That way we only right. need four people <laughs> right. or whatever. It's like, ah, oh, dude, totally fixed this in you Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think what really kind of, I don't know, it kind of bores me the first, like, half an hour, 40 minutes of this, where, like, the two dudes are just in Westworld, right? It's the whole getting this guy into the mind frame of, like, I like it here. I can just, you know, he's... See, to me, that was the fascinating part. That's the part I was yeah. more interested in, rather than the last half of the movie, the majority of it just being running around and being chased. I agree. I think it was a little... The first part was, was like... Slow-paced at times. Yeah, sure, but, but... Yeah, that but was the part that really got my attention. To know what... It, go in and vaguely know what it is, but to see them trying to figure out the rules, because they... I mean, like, those are the questions I'm coming up with as I'm watching the movie. Yeah. I'm just like, you can shoot robots in this, but how do you not shoot other people? How do you Right, run that into, was our first question, right. and then they answered it. How yeah. do you not run into other people in the park, and what happens if you interact with them? Like, but what I think we sacrificed our characters for this exposition on how it works, right? The whole movie is a how this thing works instead of uh, this guy, you know, unstru- I mean, it is there. I mean, both things are there, but I think it relies too heavily on the, here's the rules. Because I thought, like, we got... As soon as he fought the guy, I thought that was his release or whatever. Then he had to like screw the whore, and it's just like, okay, like we're through, well, we like we're to... getting through. And then they keep on going to the doctor guys. They're just like, nope. Well, they're nope, also, the right. I guess, you know, that first part, the way that you know, I was looking at it, it was like, if you're going to do a a, fa- a facsimile of a western, you know, Hollywood western, it's like you have to hit all the cliches, mm-hmm. right? I mean, granted, we don't see the bank robbery, but there's a bank robbery. Yeah, we you know, hear it. you got to go to see the prostitutes. You got to be arrested, which was one of the, you know, and break out the do the jailbreak. Right. Then you get to become the outlaw. And then I was like, the next thing they're going to do, right? When they're like, what are we going to do now? Well, we're fugitives. We can do whatever we want. There's no law there. We killed the sheriff. I'm like, they're going to go back and rob the bank, right? Yeah. But we never got that far in the movie. But uh, it is funny how this movie does answer quick because I made a joke about how, like, oh, it'd be funny if you had to live by the laws and you'd get locked <laughs> up for your six day. And then, yeah, the dude gets locked up by the sheriff. It's right. Like, then what are we going to do? Well, it's like, well, what do you do in the West? You break the you guy out of the like, What if they both got locked up? Goddamn movie. movie. Yeah, then you'd be kind of screwed, right? <laughs> wait till your vacation. Just wait till it's over and yeah. <laughs> two dudes in white coats. Or hopefully, like, right, it, maybe we'll reset the next day. That would have been fun, right? You, if you think you're arrested for the whole week and you get released at midnight when mm. it's like, ah, hey, come on, dude, you're on vacation. Get <laughs> out of here. Right? Later on in they the movie, program when they... something to happen. To maybe, get them yeah, out, right, yeah, maybe, probably. right. Somebody else would get incarcerated, a robot, right. who's like Frank James or something, and yeah. Jesse right. come and break him out or whatever. But I love how this movie has like the earliest explanation of what a computer virus is, <laughs> like meant for the atomic <laughs> age, right? Yeah. Yeah, because like, I think this is computers maybe... Computers are complex systems, just like a human body. Imagine and... an infection. Yeah, it's like they're trying to articulate a computer virus <laughs> right. in 1973. And how does it spread? How would it spread from Rome world to West world to whatever? You see, just like a human virus. Well, this is the interesting thing about this movie, because it's almost like... Well, one of two things, to me, are happening that we are not seeing. Either... Uh, they're like the whole place is being hacked, right? But we never actually see that storyline. Like, yeah. there's some group who are like opposed to the idea of this, you know, 
the moral quicksand of West of the Delos resort, yeah. right. who's hacking the thing, who started fucking around with all their systems. So their systems are failing. We just don't ever see that. There's no personality given to that uh, plot line right. or it doesn't mm-hmm. exist. Or the robots are somehow developing some kind of sentient uh, ability, you know, mm. really? and, mm-hmm. Well, what's the other? It's just uh, you know, the it's human. Like, it's human fallibility. It's humans. Humans are trying to create a, an ecosystem, a hundred percent design and ran by them. But human fallibility is built into everything we do. It's, it's kind of an ego thing, right? I'm gonna build this big thing that runs like clockwork. It's in a weird, weird way playing God. Everything yeah. needs to run like clockwork. Everything needs to go according to plan a hundred percent of the time or else we lose control, right? Like it, this, it's us having control of our environment and how we have no control over like our the environment. the human fantasy of the utopian society. It, it can't happen. Can't, it just can't fucking happen yeah. because things slip through our fingers and yeah. robots eat. But I guess that's it. They never, <laughs> but by not explaining what, what is actually happening, it's always amusing to me in this movie where, you know, where you get to see behind the scenes where there's the big, you know, hallway where they have all the, uh, they're bringing in all the broken robots at night and they're trying to fix them that they're always like, you know, what's wrong with that one? Central, central malfunction or whatever. And they have the thing open and you can see the circuit boards, but they're never actually, they're all going after hardware issues. I'm like, shouldn't you be looking at the software? Yeah. Maybe they didn't know about the it. software like, thing. Is and I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's gotta be a program. Not according to the robot vision system. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they, I don't. I don't think they could ever articulate that in the seventies. Yeah, probably yeah. not. It's like nope. We got it. Well, what's visual? I mean, that's yeah. also exactly, the thing. You yeah. know, if you're making a science fiction People can movie, see circuit boards and see yeah. that robot parts live in these yeah. things. Peel back the skin, take right. the face off, yeah. and you get to see the uh, the mechanism underneath. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it could be AI, just because if you look at the gunslinger, he doesn't start doing other things. He continues to do kind of where his program is leading him to to track these guys down and kill them. Yeah. Like if AI was developing, he would. I think he would like try and explore other avenues of where he was at and what was going on, which seems to be maybe what the TV show is going to do. Possibly, but the yeah, only yeah, yeah. okay. So just playing like devil's advocate, you may be a hundred percent right. I don't know, but the way I was reading that gunslinger's performance is like he keeps coming back to them every day out of frustration because he's a gunslinger. Yeah. That's what he's programmed to do, and because he's unable to beat them. You know, they keep killing him, so that's why he keeps coming back, you know, somehow overriding the software, yeah. recognizing them, and saying, like, this is what I want. And when he actually does plug uh, James um, uh, Brolin. Brolin, he smiles. Like, with this, there's this kind of, like, satisfied smile to, like, I've accomplished something. You know, it's like he's mm. be- he's evolving kind of up the, the yeah. I see know, that, but he emotional is, he's the man scale. in black, you know, like... It, it's a it's a guest job to become the sheriff. He's the man, but he is the villain of the robot town. That's yeah. why I don't. I, I think he'll pick on every guest. That's his mm. role. He's the gunslinger. That's why it's like I see what you're saying, but I don't think it's that. It's designed. The movie is designed to make it feel like that because it's putting a human face to just a program, right? Mm-hmm. It's making something personal when. It's just like no, this it's just programmed to come, come, come to me. You know, I think that's even more scarier. What it's not, it's not personal. This robot, no, it's just a program that's like kill you, kill yeah. you, kill you. It's no, never gonna stop. Never gonna ever fucking stop dude. until yeah. you are dead. So, are we saying that James Cameron yes. uh, oh, yeah. loved without this a doubt. movie? <laughs> without a doubt, <laughs> because this is the proto Terminator. It yeah. seems like oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah. The last half of this movie, the gunslinger tracks Richard Benjamin across uh, the desert. Space time? Through, I mean, yeah. I mean, I <laughs> through medieval world and Roman world and eventually, like, behind the scenes, like, just coming after him. I like the fact, well, I, you know, Terminator and other subsequent movies did it better. Mm-hmm. The idea that, like, we're going to throw acid in his face. Okay, whew, that's over. And then, like, it just keeps coming. Right. And then we're burn him. <laughs> Okay, that's over. Then he just keeps coming. Oh, well, that was a good scare when he turns around and like. Gunslinger's still there. Yeah, <laughs> look like a freaking. Yeah, the crispy, the crispy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that, I mean, I also find that in uh, you know, so I was saying, uh, Halloween came in 1978. And I'm like John Carpenter. He's a big Western fan. This was the Yule first like, cold stalker, mm-hmm. like the the. 
soulless stalker. Because yep. I think that's it resonates just because had dumb just... music like <laughs> the fucking music in this movie. Well, I had the very experimental electronic music. Which I think was in vogue because of what Planet of the Apes or something where they were no, doing like was, uh, or Forbidden Planet. This was, was before like Planet of the Apes. No, Planet of the Apes was like sixty eight. Was it? Yeah. Holy oh, shit! I That's thought, why I like I thought Planet of the Apes was like seventy four. When you look back at like science fiction, <laughs> <laughs> there was a se- there was a Planet of the Apes. No, motherfuckers. <laughs> there was a Planet of the Apes in seventy four. I'm sure one of the sequels. But when you look back at like this era of science fiction, which is always kind of. Uh, amusing to me you know because this is pre-star wars it's like it's just there's like there's star wars as in like you know that's your ad or bc or whatever you know the the delineation right right? and in this era like your biggest competition or the thing i think that made sci-fi kind of cool or brought it into like the modern day was you know the the special effects work in planet of the apes but then you had like soylent green a mega man logan's run uh you know was a boy and his dog late seventies? I don't know. Silent running, like all those movies and Westworld seem like they're part and parcel of like the same, you know, uh, that kitschy seventies seventies sci fi sci fi thing. Dystopian world, yeah. Underground dystopian world <laughs> with long hallways and you ever figure like it's hallway for lights. It's long. Well, it's a, yeah, because you, they all look the same. All the master control rooms with the blinking lights and the mm. giant spinning computer it's tapes. Swirling and, geometry. Yeah. And you've got like, like air traffic controllers everywhere. We have, we have triangles graphics. today. Does anybody know what triangles means? <laughs> what are triangles? I'm reading vectors. <laughs> They're doing. Who pushed the white button? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. I was. Uh, are they waiting for one of those to go out? Is that how they'll know? It's like it's not working. It's not the forty third one to the you know the eight rows down, thirty fourth one in. I told you to keep an <laughs> eye on it. Should be blinking. It's not. <laughs> it's just to let you know, like this is working. It's working. Right. It's working. And they portray all those guys as just like these kind of working stiffs who are while they're trying to cater to their guests' wishes, they're also like. You know, uh, I need my dry cleaning done, or you know, you, get, you, have, yeah, yeah. Cinnamon, you have cinnamon Third toast. Council. They're all yeah. smoking and ordering eggs. <laughs> and I was like, is that to make the scene more interesting? Because really, if it wasn't for their like normal business, like all it would would be like bring that up five spectrums. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're gonna bring that down five. It's like uh, you're listening to the get me some eggs, or, yeah. <laughs> or right. Yeah, yeah. It just made it a little less dry. Yeah. yeah. But still, at the same time, like once again, man, he 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 uh, honed this in Jurassic Park, right? Because like I fucking love Samuel Jackson's character in Jurassic Park, and that is what that was supposed to be, you know, mm-hmm. the hold on to your butts and all that shit. They just didn't give him anything to do. By the time they had to <laughs> shut down their system, there was no way for them to like regain it back or like. Oh, there's was like fuck. There's like nothing for. I don't know, man. This movie's got good ideas. They even have good scenes, but like, man, the whole like actual telling of this story is like, fuck, all it is is them learning how to live in a Western world, which I can assume, mm. you know, from watching all the Western TV or whatever the hell I have. And then it's just the doctor guys being like, uh oh. <laughs> That's not working. This is something isn't working. is wrong. There's the meeting of the board where we have to sit around with I just yes. it was amazing to See how many ashtrays are on that table? Yeah. Oh, it's America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where you could smoke. Yeah, well, they thought we were we'll just going to be more free in the future <laughs> back then. They're like, what? Everybody will be able to smoke where they want to. Double the ashtrays. What do you think this is? Fuck, man. <laughs> Stack them up. Well, Westworld as like a uh, like an amusement park resort is, I mean, in this, I guess if we're talking about like the safety of it, right? Or the accessibility even of it. It's like. This is a thousand dollars a day in nineteen seventy three mm. money. I don't know what that is, but uh two thousand dollars a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that you go there and Damn. once you go in, which I was kind of disappointed that, you know, you're you're not like thrust immediately into like off the hovercraft and then like boom, you're in uh some like a saloon or a back room of a right. uh you know dry goods store where you have to get all your shit together. It was a prep room. They get to go through the prep room, get all their western gear, and then go into this world, and I'm like what if you had some type of medical condition where, you know, you had, to, you know, a motorized wheelchair or something that you had to bring with you into this? It's like this is trying to be it's an amusement park where it's like we're going to try and recreate as authentically I'm putting that in quotes as authentically as we can this 
time period. Mm. Yeah. So basically, like, you go out the door and into this world, and you are kind of transported back in time, and you're on your own. Like, there are no safeguards for any kind of modern convenience. So are you saying you want handicaps to be treated like cripples? No, but I mean, even like... No, like someone with diabetes. Do they have their insulin taken with them? Do they have, like, all the... Of course. I imagine. It's still They're vacation. <laughs> Yeah, you still go back to your room at night. But they didn't have any of their own stuff. Like I, I don't know. I just I don't know where the line is. Like, what can they bring that's theirs? What do they have to leave behind? Like, like if they think, suffer from migraines, like, can they bring? Yeah, can I bring yeah. my allergy medicine? Or do you I, go yeah. to the apothecary and they carry that stuff? Yeah, because it, you know. But then it's See, not a I, realistic. I didn't get the uh, idea you know. that it's like Survivor or nothing like that. They don't like strip you and be like, "You'll be living as if you are in the wet." In the wet, you but know. It's kind, like, but kind of because he makes a comment about how the room isn't quite up to snuff for his taste of how much he's spending and he's like but it's the west this is how it was this is how, and yeah. he has to like adapt to it so where does the line where's the line i mean i don't know i mean that'd be nice if they, well, they don't want you to die there let's put that right I and don't, they, they don't do and, much to stop it and apparently the uh you know the big brother or the corporation the the guys behind Dallas. the scenes are Dallas. watching everything assuming uh, assumedly even the all the intimate stuff that's yeah. going on oh, between sure. Like they are still paying attention to all this, so they can calibrate the uh, experience, yeah. the, yes. the artificial beings toward it. But so they would catch anything that was a life-threatening emergency. But like, what if you know? Shut it down. You run a business, and it is you know you have to make a phone call. It, well, that's the only thing you got to do. Yeah. Is you got to make a phone call at you know five o'clock on Friday. Otherwise, you're on vacation. Or nope. you have, it's like <laughs> you don't get to. You're in the West. Well, I, then again, that's what that's we're it. saying. Where's that line? Is it like you are in this time period and on your own? In which case, it is kind of like. And it, I mean, obviously, it's exclusive by the amount that they're charging, but also exclusive on like. Who can participate right. yeah. or who would be willing to go have this experience? I want to know how hygienic these facilities are as well. Because there was no, like, antiseptics. <laughs> there's no cleaning power, or like modern cleaning power. They both slept with that robot. D- <laughs> Dick Van Patten. Self-cleaning. Yeah, self-cleaning. Dick Van Patten and, and, and Richard, whatever his name is. He, they both slept with her within like 12 hours. They clean their gyroscopes or whatever they called them. In the it was like sharing a dildo. <laughs> well, I think uh, uh, Dick Van Patten uh, like woke up with the hooker yeah, that, that he, Richard Benjamin had slept with hours before. Yeah. So there was no overnight <laughs> like, <laughs> where period. Was the cleaning how process do we know? There? But how do we know? Well, I mean, I can't say this for the gunslinger, but like multiple robots could look the same and have the same roles Very and true. just swap it out. Like this one's used, <laughs> like set out like horror beast, you know, B one or B two or. Right. Well, that makes sense because when uh, Richard Benjamin's being chased by the gunslinger and he finds a technician and he's like, "I'm being chased by a gunslinger," and the guy doesn't go like, "Oh, well, you got to watch out for him." He's like, "Oh." That's probably like an 862 model or a B95 or something like that. So, like, even right. the technicians, there has to be multiple versions yeah. that look the same. You know, these different type be. of models that that uh, fill these different roles. It would be like a scary thing in the TV show if the gunslingers chase him and then you go into a room full of them. You know, and then you're like, oh, my gunslingers. God. <laughs> yeah. All the backup models. Yeah, That's they, what it looks like. Yeah. The TV show commercials look like they've made, you know. <laughs> so when they die, they don't repair them. They just, like, boot up another one and load the uh, the brain into it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, somehow having to learn too much about this <laughs> world, like, took away uh, from... Uh, <laughs> It just took away from, like, the character experience, I guess. We had to be too informed about the world. Yeah, but and I think some of it, like, uh, Holly... Whatever, man, I didn't... Well, I mean, the idea that, like, you know, because <laughs> my question was when they went in there, you know, Richard Benjamin's asking, like, you know, how can I... You know, are these real guns? And it's like, yeah. It's like, well, how can I shoot... How do I know that I'm not shooting, like, another guest? Because we're the only two here. And <laughs> well, with the idea that there they're is not. all the people. There's who, the sheriff guy. I'm sorry. There's three people in Westworld. The, no, the movie, they're all living out their own little fantasy because there was like trolleys of people brought in there. The movie only focuses well, on. So like, is yeah. the, the movie, you're supposed to assume every robot kills everybody. And at the same time, everybody kills every robot. Like, that's what I don't like. As soon as the shit hits the fan of this movie, there's just dead robots everywhere. It's like, well, this sucks. I thought there's going to be like. 
killer robots everywhere <laughs> running amok. I thought there was going to be a community of people trying to survive. I think was for a little bit. Like when they show yeah. Roman world. Yeah. yeah. They like, show, they're just are, shutting but down. You, on this but you like, don't ah. know who's a human and who's a robot. You, <laughs> right, you know what right. I'm saying? You just don't know. Yeah. And it's just like, ah, that's where this movie really misses. Like, that's the shit I'm interested in. I, you know, like, like I was just, I was watching this. I was like, man, maybe this movie would have been more interesting if, if you would have started right in the thick of it, just started right with everything already have happened. And it's the Western guy going to medieval world, saving a princess in the, you know, in the dungeon. And then, you know, you get to know what the fuck's going on. But, you know, I don't know. I You're think saying without like an orientation, which is basically what the, Oh, well, I'm sure you would do it eventually. Or, you know, you'd have to do something eventually, but you know, I just think, uh, too much of the, uh, uh, exposition of this is how this whole world works. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of. And I think with this kind of movie, everyone's going to have so many questions. You have to explain how some of these things work. Yeah. But like I said, they, they answered your guys' little piddly shit about where's the paper towels? Where's my thing about where's the 40 other people on vacation here? Why didn't they get together in a community? That's to me, that's a bigger question than like. How do you tweeze your eyebrows in Westworld? <laughs> do you do it? <laughs> like, well, I mean, that's I, just, I, I don't know. I'm, I had those questions too. I wanted to know where everyone else was. I'm but, just saying there's lots of questions. But that ruined my experience for this movie. Mm. Wanting to know where other people are and why isn't their community fighting back and like, I don't know. It just ruined it for me. I was like, damn it. There's only three people when we got here. And now, like, we're only down two. <laughs> you know, basically. I mean. You don't get to know. We even go to. they the, all get murdered. Like, the one guy in uh, Medieval World got murdered. But we don't even get to know him, right? We don't even give right. a shit. I mean, yeah, it's a cool little, like, it's a little thing. that, But, like, we could have had a montage of, like, four or five people having that happen, right? Like, right. some whore, like, <laughs> and, like, I don't know I mean. Right, in the middle of sex, is strangling something, guy. right? We could have had a bunch of, instead of like acting like, well, this is a character. It's like, well, it's not a character. We don't know this fucking guy. We saw him like no, in the beginning. I think he's just a representative of like, you know, this is another guest. I mean, yeah. primarily we're going yeah. through the eye. Well, I mean, right. you think about the ground that it's trying to cover. It's like it's got to give you the guest experience for Westworld and Future World and Roman World. So you got to have at least one. Or sorry, God damn it, uh, Medieval World. (laughs) So you got to put, you know, like at least one people, one person in each one of those places. Then we want to show what's going on behind the scenes. That's like because I think the first act is basically, you know, Brolin and Benjamin going to Westworld and the orientation and living out their Western fantasies, Mm -hmm. and then the the second act begins with. That night, you know, when all of a sudden the guys come out, pick up, we see how the park actually functions, Mm -hmm. like behind the scenes. So you have to show, you have to have like a representative in each one of these pockets. So I think, you know, it's a 70s filmmaking or whatever. So they're just saying, if you look at these people, they're representative of the trolley full of people that arrive. We're just supposed to imagine they're there. The question of where they go is I think that they all get murdered during the robot uprising. Yes. The thing that I'm just kind of unclear of is the, uh, like, there's a whole bunch of, there's a bunch of uh, uh, foreshadowing that there is going to be a robot, you know, murder spree at some point. Yeah, right? They're becoming more a little what, more. The, what we got, yeah. But they just, on, you dude. know, it starts with, like, a snake attacks a dude, and then uh, the That's Black unusual. Knight stabs the on the third day the black knight stabs the uh the guest in uh, medieval world and then the gunslinger goes after benjamin and at that point the whole place is like vacant so did everybody else get murdered yeah. while they were passed out in the bar and yeah. then we see the the yeah. guys in the because at the same time the guys in the in mission control the doors have all sealed, and they're losing their oxygen. For some reason. Because <laughs> it's all automated. Steel. Are they underwater? I, so this is why I go like, space? But this is what I'm saying, why it's maybe a hack attack. Maybe a hack attack, because they've hacked it's all not, the they systems. They designed everything, because he even picked up the phone, he's like, nothing works around here. Yeah. It's all about how we design shit that's supposed to be state-of-the-art and fancy, but we suck. Oh, shit, actually, they address that, don't they? He says that some of the newer robots have been designed by the other robots. Right. We don't even, we even know, know how they, they work. work. Yeah. Okay, all right, so that's there it is. the blanket. <laughs> robots designed by robots. I totally missed that part. Oh, yeah. 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 We was, don't even know how they work. Because I'm telling you, it's so about, like, how do I live here in Westworld? It's not about what the movie should be about, I think. Like, 
they they tuck in the meaning of the movies in stupid weird little places that I mean shit. I guess the reason that you buy a ticket to the movie is that it's going to be like some kind of experience, you know, like an entertainment thing where you get to see all, you know, like a, a sci-fi perspective on. And I was robbed. Western. I was robbed. The one thing I expected to see was a robot uprising. I got a bunch of robots laying on the ground after two in the morning. <laughs> you know, that's all I got. Like, I'm saying for robots. In 1970, the, the 1973 audience, I suppose, right. is unfamiliar with, because, you know, the, the thing became a big hit afterwards. Did but it? there you're going to see, like, uh, really? you know, just to Is this to another see this. one of those cult classics? Yeah. No, this is really? a legit, like, gigantic yeah. uh, bonafide hit. Pre-Star Wars, you know, I mean, there's, like, there's Westworld, there's Logan's Run. no one run. talks about Westworld. Nobody. Well, there was Nobody. a sequel uh, called Future, Future World, World, which was produced by AIP, weirdly enough. And I've heard Peter some Fonda people like that one better. <clears throat> I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. I'm interested mm-hmm. in seeing it. I really want to. And there was a television show in 1980 called Beyond Westworld, mm-hmm. which doesn't take place in Westworld at all. It takes place. It's, Beyond it's following. Beyond, yeah. <laughs> well, I watched the pilot episode of this and it was uh, there's that one has a villain who's today a, world. He's been <laughs> hacking the robots <laughs> and he has like his own army of robots oh. and they're out in the world. And you is can't that tell why you're who's... stuck on this fucking hacker thing is because you watch the pilot. So you're like. No. Oh, that was cool. No, I mean, I, I was just trying was to explain, like, uh, you know, just all my own internal process. Like, how, what was actually happening? Yeah, why can't man suck? Why can't man just suck? Why does there need to be some outside? Why can't we just suck? Why can't scientists suck at their job? They're not perfect. I guess, well, the only thing I'm asking is, if they suck at their job, what did they do wrong? Specifically. How, they won't know. It's a, they're, They you know, all died in an oxygenless room. They'll never know. Yeah, they made an oxygen-sealed room for some dumb reason. They're like, we need this, I think. <laughs> computers need What if there's fire? Uh, well, we can make we can oxygen-sealed sealed rooms. That way, no oxygen. Oh, good idea. Ooh, we're shaking <laughs> our hands, shaking our hands. Science, science, science. <laughs> but that is why I do like these type of movies. I like the failure of science. It's genius. I'll take that. No. <laughs> I was just disappointed. Because at the beginning, I kind of got the feeling that something more was going to come of um, James Brolin's character. I thought he was going to be more involved with the falling of Westworld. Like, like because he, he'd been there before, obviously, and he just had this, like, mystery about him that I thought he was going to be more involved. Like, he knew something that no one else knew. I think he was just the counterpoint to uh, Benjamin's excitement for going there yeah, for the first I, time. Yeah, I got that like after, after there, they got there. It. But Well, he's just the guy telling him. He's the exposition, right? He, instead of us, w- w- instead of like what they should have done, it had like the orientation video while they're like on their plane or, or whatever. What fun would they, I get that for the I plot. Know, that I get would, it. Like, how come they weren't, Dude, none of this did it great. explained to them? RoboCop is exactly how it should be done. You know, the original Robocop. That's how you splice in, like, video with what's uh, actually happening. Uh, oh, that would be that. awesome. Well, yeah, just the whole, you know, just the whole fucking GBS, you know. <laughs> give us a minute, we'll give you the world or whatever the fuck, right? You don't think that this works better as, like, as a movie for, like, a story or a plot line where, mm-hmm. you you know, it's like you reveal stuff to the audience as you go instead of, like, having a... A giant they don't reveal anything though. to you. Yeah, You're just do. watching They're people just like, in Westworld. The, the gun, like, how does it not shoot people? It's revealed later on in the movie. But it's stu- like you said, it's stupid. You wouldn't go. They wouldn't just set you down and fucking like, hey, you know, go on the camping experience. Drop you off in the <laughs> woods. You're like, hey, what? Well, how do I? <laughs> like, thank God that guy was there. Right? If it well, wasn't no, for that I, fucking I don't, dude being with I don't with disagree, him, because, like, how would you know that if they just put you in there? That's like, why I think we could have got some more story. Like, why is that dude taking a vacation in Westworld? Is he married? Does he have a bad relationship with his wife? I mean, most of the time... Uh, Wait, James Berlin Benjamin, or the other one? Benjamin, his wife, left him. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. He did say it. Yeah. So there was literally... I mean, usually I, I rail against a lot heavy character shit. But in this, you literally had tw- 10 seconds of character. My wife left me. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're rest <laughs> Yeah, let's go fuck a whore. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I didn't feel, I wasn't worried about anybody because I didn't know anybody. They're just people in Westworld. I didn't know anybody. Mm. And they didn't have enough time to get into scenarios in Westworld. And I, uh, and, even though they were getting to the gambler in Westworld, that the, or the the gambler, the gunslinger in Westworld, that should have been the story, right? That we were building on the 
the man in black picking on him. But while we were getting that, we should have been getting the scientist story on why these things are going to start. I mean, maybe there's just not a lot to say about this story. Maybe it's just not a lot to... This is why he threw a bunch of kids and an old man and a, well, that's and a the fiance thing. Like, that doesn't want kids in the... I think what came, <laughs> what came out of this is actually the better idea. It is. Like, the more refined yeah. ideas were taken, like, many people saw that were inspired by it and took the better ideas, or... or the areas that you could explore more and made their own separate movies out of it. Because that's the benefit of this movie. I mean, I still love, I mean, I think the benefit of this movie is the idea that this is talking about television. It's talking about how we, because as soon as his buddy dies, right, that's your, that's your, oops, you know, I was disassociated and now my, my buddy's here really, he got really shot by the gunslinger guy. That's when the TV turns off, and he's like, "Oh fuck!" You know, even though I can, per- even though I can turn this on and pretend to uh, not care and be Im- immoral or whatever, you know, seeing the reality of it is, you know, whatever. yeah, because he has that moment where it's like, "Am I supposed to believe this or not?" Is you know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> as he's trying to sync up to like what's yeah. actually happened, which I think is the you know that's the you know one of those overriding themes of the movie if you put people in a synthetic this is like virtual reality right yeah. it's like a comment on the hazards of virtual reality living in a virtual space where there are no consequences and you just kind of you know can dictate your own i guess rules and reality yeah then it, which is like does it weaken your ability to cope with the real world, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I suppose... It I think so. I got a lot of friends that watch lovable Hitman movies. I'm like, this is disgusting, man. Like, well, no Hitman is going to be a lovable person. It's like, I can't even... I can't even have a, uh, like a... Uh, a... Uh, what do they call it? You uh, separate from... Uh, Disassociated. Yeah, I can't even... Because I'm like, I would never oh, believe yeah. a fucking um, Hitman... I know what you're saying. Yeah, right? I can never <laughs> believe... Leave of faith. No, it's a... Uh, it's not leave of faith. It's a... Uh, suspension I, of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief. Ah, there it is. I don't, what is happening to us yeah, tonight? Is it in the air? It's, it's, in, uh, it's in the beer. <laughs> we were it's, up really late last yeah. night. <laughs> it's no excuse. Oh, God. The wheels are turning. I They're just turning slowly. when I start. <laughs> but, yeah. I just... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like those type of stories. I like the type of stories um, where... Well, you can have empathy with a with a likable hitman, right? No, or just I can't. the idea I know. of seeing uh-huh. the world through another. If person's you really point met that view. person, you would think they're the most disgusting well, person in your. Well, seriously, yeah. Seriously, I don't yeah. like. This is how. This is why I think movies like Westworld are. This is what they're talking about. They're talking about right now. You feel like, well, yeah, you could. It's like, no, that's the fantasy world. Like that's a fucking fantasy. I think that's the distinction, though. It's like you have to have, like, well, I think maybe maybe this but is you it. Can, they're it's talking like about an can... appreciation, though. They're, they, these people set aside the their morals, and they start to appreciate the world they're actually, or the fake world, right? That's the point, right? You, you lose yourself in the killing and the sex and the blah, 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 blah. But I think that's I mean, there's no guarantee it's going to shock you back. Or is this a distinction, right? Like, if you watch a movie... And you're asked to empathize with the likable hitman. You can still say, if I was to meet this person on the street, you know, you know, in real life, this would be a deplorable human yeah. being. But in the the separation of uh, the empathic response of watching a movie, it's like it's it's being able to see the world through another person's yeah, perspective. Yes, but, exactly. uh, but why the, do you need to do that? So, well, wait, so, you know what I mean. The second part of this is, I think the the distinction between that and the virtual space is where. I mean, I guess what I'm going to have and I'm going to be able to see the world through the point of view of someone who you know, roughed it in 1870. But I'm not from 1870. I don't have any of the consequences of living in 1870. So I can literally enforce my will at will and murder and screw whoever I want with no consequences. I think that is. You know, it's like those are those are two, talking about two. I think they're two different experiences. And but we're I talking about television is... of the seventies. It was westerns. If we were, if this was to be us going to Westworld, we'd be going to Sons of Anarchy, Walking Dead. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So for these characters, there's not this big separation. This is them. Like, no, this is what we fantasize about. This is what we do. And the thing about the empathy, um, like in movies for these things. I mean, I think the reason this is important is because, and I do think this movie's talking about it, where. 
even though you think you can disassociate yourself, you're still teaching yourself to be empathetic for any cause, right? Where you shouldn't be necessarily, you know? Uh, funny story, I used to work with a uh, a crackhead that lived in a shelter, right? And I used to give him rides home because, hey, you know, I'm helping this guy out, right? Everybody used to be like, man, I feel bad that he's a crackhead. I was like, why is a crack? He spends his money on crack and lives in a fucking shelter. You feel bad? It's like they've taught us to be so empathetic about, oh, we don't know everybody's situation. You know what? Sometimes we don't fucking need to know. Sometimes there's a right and a fucking wrong. And I don't care what happened in all those years that made you some way. No, there's a right and there's a wrong, you know? But I think that and that's kind of the thing. Maybe that's where, as a society, we're saying that maybe we were losing it, is that having that that <clears throat> moral guidepost or so, something so you can watch the movie about the, you know, again, I keep going back to the empathetic, right. the likable <laughs> hitman. Instead you love of the, him. <clears throat> right? Like but what... you can still say, like, this is the right, reason right, why yeah. he's in that situation is because of these bad choices. But they that don't he made. show yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so to me, one of the only shows that does this is, is Sopranos. Fucking Tony Soprano is one of the most likable and most fucking disgusting characters. And they, but the show shows it. They show you the likable and the unlikable. If you watch Gross Point Blank, they're only showing, I'm a lovable hitman. I'm, oh, I'm John Cusaro. They're not showing the bad side of it. They're not representing it equally. For that movie, see The American with George Clooney. Ugh. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> the life of a hitman is not one that any, that you want. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, everybody know, else wants why, to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I do think this is an interesting uh, topic uh, for a movie. Mm-hmm. Not a great, uh, like... Great cinematic story, but a good topic. Yeah, Wait, is this rap? Or should we move into rap? I guess we should. Are we gonna <laughs> call Igor for? Uh... Well, yeah. I mean, you guys, uh, anything else about Westworld that we didn't cover? I'm good. They burn him up. He dies. Yeah, I did like the. Uh, he finds the. They run uh, through a lot of hallways. What happens to Richard Benjamin? We don't like, know. does he ever get out of there? The, me, the I mean, it just ends with him. Like, he'd have to yeah. walk back to headquarters. Uh, or steal can't a get jet. The doors are locked. Then that man's gonna have to live off the bodies of robots. Dude, there's gotta be like hundreds of more people on this fucking like area, and they're all gone. There's they're murdered. There was eight scientists in this room, (laughs) and then there was one electrician guy out and about on a golf cart, and and then there was fucking all done. And they, Five guests. they explain also, <laughs> I guess in a little, like once one line of dialogue or whatever, they say that, you know, the robots, some of them have a battery, like since they shut down everything down, right. the robots are working on their battery so that some of them have an hour charge. Some of them can last 12 hours. So the idea is in 12 hours, all of them will stop working yeah. and then everything. So Richard Benjamin is in one of those untenable positions where you're fucked you're in the middle of god knows where and all the machinery is shut down and everyone else around you is dead yeah that's kind of fucked eat what you can and start making your way towards something bleak ending so future world from the way i understand it again i haven't seen the movie but it uh they shut down westworld because of the calamitous thing that happened in this movie and they start uh, future world. Delos starts future world. So you can go to medieval world, Roman world, or future world, which is takes place on a space station, and you get to uh, cool. live out your space man fantasy. Fucking aliens. That's oh, all no. you do is fuck. It's like, all you I do think is they fuck try in this to, uh, world. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting that that's <laughs> where oh, yeah, dude, the HBO, HBO show's going to be awesome. <laughs> that's where the HBO show's go, and it's like, I think that's, you know. I think the casting the... call, they said it was the largest casting call for people to show their penises <laughs> like in any other movie. Yeah, so Rome World and West World is going to be real fun in that TV show. <laughs> Yipes. Yeah. I think they send a journalist in. To, it's one of those, like, under yeah. uncovering, like, what goes on behind the scenes at Delos cool. in Future World. I'll be watching it. Future Sounds World? Sounds cool, man. You're going to go check it out? It's yeah. going to be oh, the, West the, the, West the West World TV show, show you're saying. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not watching Future World. Call it. No. <laughs> Move World. on. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let us summon our male uh, gimp. Demon? Igor. Igor. Where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. I thank you, Igor. Thank you. Thanks.
All right, then. Well, if you want to find out how to write the Somebody else can come up with something every once in a while. That's all I'll say. I keep waiting for the joke. It was like, um, (laughs) (laughs) but uh, you can write to us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or email us Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com or we're on Twitter. So anyway, a couple weeks ago, we watched a movie called Street Trash. And uh, Bobette Georgie writes in. Bobette. She wrote like a paragraph on this. She did. So I'm going to read the abbreviated version <laughs> here. You can see the full version on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. But she says, probably lots of work and many takes went into getting the best shots from this movie and blew the budget. It's got good makeup effects. And uh, she loved the very end of the movie. Beheading by what uh, oxygen. Tank. Oh, the uh, yeah, the uh, like shooting the uh, air, right and his yeah. head went like flying in the air. That was pretty and came down down I still feel like that was edited. I don't know why. Yeah, right. Feels weird. It's a good shot. Oh, uh, that's. I it? didn't tell you guys something about that. Like the whole story before, and they edited it out of the movie. Is that Bronson is their dad? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> One major storyline that they shot beginning to end that they had to edit out was that Bronson was their dad. There's a, one of them has a pendant he wears around his neck, which matches a tattoo that Bronson has on his arm. Get the fuck oh out. So he's their dad. All right. Well, there Crazy you go. Shit. If we had this information for the street trash, now this is like an addendum to our street trash episode. Right. So next week we'll get more street trash shit. Yeah, there you go. All right. So, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. You hear that sound? The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Thanks, Lurk. He's reminding us that it's time for wrap-ups. Wrap-ups is that time in the show where we go around the room and tell you, the listener, because I'm sure you've been waiting for this moment with bated breath, what we thought of the movie individually. And we're going to start off with Travis. Um, I think my assumptions about this movie were correct. Uh, why I never, like, I mean, I've been putting off watching this movie forever, right? I've always wanted to see it. Sounds like a good premise, but I'm like, God damn it, I know. It's talking about robots. It's talking about killer robots. I know it's going to be a fucking cheap-ass Western. I just know it's just going to look like a cheap Western. It's not going to give me these robots and all this shit I'm wishing for. And uh, it kind of didn't. Uh, I mean, I'm glad it had some of that kind of, like, dystopian eugenics world message that I like so much in my 70s sci-fi movies. <laughs> but very little of it. It didn't, like, I guess, like, oh, Soil and Green's too much? <laughs> no, I like a lot. If your movie, That's like, like Death, Death Race 2000 is about people that have to plow down the useless worker. The For people points. That, yeah, the young and the old. The people that are useless to society. It's like, I want that. I do. I want heavy social commentary. Now we have the purge. In my, yeah, well, the first one. <laughs> Uh yeah, but uh yeah, oh uh, yeah. God damn it, you had to bring Sorry. up the purge. Sorry, <laughs> the purge two, the, 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 purge, world. the <laughs> purge two and three became propaganda. Oh, anyway, so uh, I like how we hit certain things, and it's like he has to talk about. I them. have to. And he push the button. He's like, I can't get past it. I'm telling you, man, they did it first. I used to watch movies, and then they started making political points at me. I'm like, oh fuck you! I better get political so I know I can say fuck you, asshole, Hollywood. So, uh, Westworld. yeah, Westworld, 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 Westworld. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It just turned out to be that way for me. I found it to be a very kind of boring Western where I'm like, oh boy, we're doing this. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like it got kind of exciting when the robots were malfunctioning, but I just didn't get what I thought I was always going to get from this movie. It was at least like a malfunctioning park. And like, I thought I was, I don't know. I just can see, I mean, I can see why they're going to do a TV show. Out of this. It's just like, dude, there has to be a community of people. Like this should be interesting. And it's not, you know, it's just one guy wanting, running away from one other guy for 40 fucking minutes. And it's not like they're shooting back and forth at each other. It's literally just like a good mile or two between them for 40 minutes. <laughs> and you get to find out that More the, and it's a good thing that they upgraded his visual cortex with an infrared oh. camera and the super sensitive hearing or it's whatever. Like, why yeah. did you even need to do that? Because it was malfunctioning. So they did this and it was like, turns out that was It'll a bad make them better. You know, so, but I do love the type of topics that this brings up. The whole, like, how we think we're so smart, uh, you know, building advanced technology, but how we just don't understand that, uh, whatever, that 
anything's fallible. Or the whole uh, thing from Jurassic Park about how chaos, you know, chaos always wins right. and all that shit, right? So, yeah. I mean, I actually would still recommend the movie. <laughs> yeah, that was I know. Twist ending. It what? is a twist, twist ending. ending. Like a real left turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think I because I think these dystopian point of view. I think they're so important. Wow, they are about to hit that brick wall. What would you do? Turn left. <laughs> I, I I do think any of those type of movies to me are really fucking important. Like I don't know. I just like what they say. Uh, I guess m- more than what they are. Sometimes I suppose. Where, like, I wouldn't, like, I'm not going to, like, track this down. Like, this doesn't need to go on my shelf or anything like that. But I still appreciate it for what it is and what I got out of it. And I can't say I was a big fan of it, but I would still recommend it. Just because it's Swiss World. Swiss World. Hey, I can't wait for a second. I'm fine. I'm fine. Sean's a little under the weather. Jeez. A little bit. <laughs> um, stay home. <laughs> Aww. God damn it. Fine, I'll leave now. <laughs> no empathy. Hey, that means I can go over really. <laughs> yeah, right? We start doing things. This, means you can do it. <laughs> oh, this works. Oh, damn. Um, <clears throat> Westworld. Um, as far as the breakdown of the movie, um, I, I think I liked uh, the first half of the movie more than the second half. I enjoyed the second half, but, um, I like, uh, the setup of the world. I like what they gave us in the exploration of sort of, uh, what the rules of the world were. I think, uh, you have to set up the rules so that you know, uh, so that you can break them later in order to, I mean, to get the second half of the movie or to cause some, uh, some friction that'll lead you through the movie. Cause if you set up the rules, you can realize when they're being broken, if not by our main characters and by things happening around them. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I appreciated that. I really liked them figuring out what was going on because I had no idea. I haven't seen this movie before. So I didn't know the rules for Westworld. So to see the main characters exploring it, uh, I found that fascinating. Um, it devolves a little bit. Uh, once we get to, um, just the chasing around for the last half of the movie, um, because it's not uh, t- particularly suspenseful to me, um, I, you know, I did want to you know, follow them and see how it ended up because <laughs> and where they would end up going. But um, uh, I like what they did. I think they could have, um, or the ideas that uh, they presented. And I think, as you can see, you can see the influence it's had on many other filmmakers who have uh, looked and seen like the possibilities of Westworld and taken them and applied them to their own movies and explored them uh, to much greater detail. Um, I think that's obviously what the show is going to do. Um, but I like what Westworld kind of gives us. It gives us uh, possibility in that world. And I like what they did. I'd recommend it. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that. The first half was was pretty entertaining. Um, I really liked the concept, the adult amusement park, the the. In, indulging in your fantasies. I thought that was really creative. I, I love that idea. I still like that idea. I think that um, I think that it, the HBO series could be really amazing because I, I think that there's so many elements that would have been really great in this movie had they been explored properly. And I think making it into a show is going to do that. Like we said, we kind of had some some arguments earlier about how some of us th- liked the wanted more character development. Some of us thought that Maybe there shouldn't have been as much um, explanation of the world, or maybe there should have been more. But I think doing it as a series, it's going to do that a lot better. Um, we're going to understand the the world. We're going to understand behind the scenes. We're going to understand the different things. I think there's so many great elements that it's just too much for a movie. Like There's not enough time to explore all the things that they could have and needed to necessarily. So as a show, I think it's going to be great, because I really love all the concepts of this movie. I think it's really unique. And like we said later on, Michael Crichton did it really great for Jurassic Park. Um, he approached it a lot better. I think it was explained a lot better. Um, but I, I still love this concept. I thought it was great. I, it just drug a little bit um, in a lot of parts. But I, yeah, it was a little hokey. Um, it got a little hokey at times. I was hoping it'd be a little more... Um, Dramatic. I I agree, Travis. I was hoping for more robot battles. Like, I think that's what everyone really wanted. 
Um, but I, I do like it. I thought it was, I thought it was a cool concept and I, um, yeah, we watch a lot of movies that I'm like, oh my God, is it over yet? And I didn't feel that way about this one. Like a drug, but I still wanted to see how it ended. So I would recommend it. Like in the latter half of the movie, instead of just being chased by one robot, he runs into other robots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been cool. Yeah. That would have maybe yeah. livened up the latter half of it. You know, I'll tell you this too, like the HBO show, the idea that they're going to be able to have that you don't have here is you because now artificial intelligence is a thing. Yeah. It's going to be the people, the robots in Westworld don't know that they're robots. They think Westworld mm. is the real thing. And then there's yeah. these interlopers oh, yeah. coming in. And yeah. you have to follow, like, all. so that's all the different avenues you have into. Yeah. How many characters world? do you think are going to oh, be robots oh, that they're not going to tell us? <laughs> that they're oh going to make God. us think are human, are revealed to be robots like later Cylon, on. Like Cylon, like fucking... Yeah. I hope they don't Galactica. do that. All It'd be kinda... nice if there was a way for them to hide the medieval world. Like, if you, if you as the viewer only thought it was Westworld... And then when he, like, actually goes to the medieval world, like, you could end the first season on that, right? Like, gets out of Westworld, the whole sign, you are now leaving Westworld, right? And then, yeah. boom, fucking oh medieval God. world. Like, know. that should well, be, like... It just blew my mind, Travis. Some that, of the stuff, it seems like if you, <laughs> would, if you reworked this movie or rewrote it, you could come up with, like, you know, a way to make... The discovery of like the basement subterranean laboratory yeah, surprising, exactly, or the, the yeah. fact that they're you know, there's so <clears> much potential. But I get like okay, so this is the you know, I mean, I like this movie through the lens of it's kind of a fossil, it's a relic on the you know, I mean, as like you know, uh, tracking the history of cinematic science fiction, right, and like all the the um, the progeny that come out off this movie. It's like when you watch it, yeah, you're like, holy shit, like there's the the Terminator right there. I mean, again, I haven't seen the movie before this that's like that gave Westworld the idea of the mm-hmm. unstoppable right. inhuman killing, you know, human looking robot that just will come after you yeah. and kill you. You know, it's like this is the, f- as far as I can track it back, this is where, you know, I'm aware of it, right? Um, the idea of the, the computer virus in this, the, uh, pixelated, you know, uh, vision camera. It's like, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that they started that we kind of have to look at as like, all right, they didn't develop it as well as we say they could because they were just coming up with it and hadn't, you know, yeah. seen the bigger picture yet. It was mm-hmm. like, just to even get it into this, you know, hour and a half long entertainment. And I guess that's what it's trying to be first, right? It's like the way that the, the Crichton's getting the job is to deliver something that's going to make money. And so we just want it to be entertaining and it's robots in the West and you're crossing off two, you know, things right there. The kids want the robots. It's people looks like robots and you're in the West, which appeals to like all the, no, I don't think so. But you know what I'm just saying? It's like, I mean, it could have been. It's definitely you know, like the 18 year old, the kid. It is. Yeah. It is a PG the rated movie for 1973. So um, back then, I still think shit like, I mean, I wouldn't say like Soylent Green, but it's like those were the sci-fi yeah, movies yeah, yeah. for the family. And they were Fucking all PG, Omega right? Man, I don't think they shit. were like hard R movies there, you know. Um, so, yeah, it raises a lot of interesting themes. There's a lot to think about in the movie that we've talked about that, you know, can be explored, you know, in, in sequels and remakes. And I know uh, Crichton had said that he developed this, you know, he was trying to work on it as a novel. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then decided that it was better as a screenplay because all of the imagery that's associated with the West or with uh Roman world or medieval world, he's like, you're getting all of these impressions from the movies that you've seen. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this deserves to be done in a visual style. And then it's like, if you're doing that as a visual thing, well, then you're not going to go and try and make like the world's most authentic Western. You're, you are trying to make something, you know, it's like, it's a future park that's based on, the characters impressions of Hollywood films. And so that's kind of, uh, you know, I guess how I take that, that whole thing is, is working. So you think even out. though the character says this is authentic 1800, you're still relying on the idea that like they think it's authentic 1800, it's but it's know. really just right. what like a movie yeah. studio right. would do. Yeah. Like where they're like, of course, look at it. It's aged. Yeah. Cause like, you know, the, what the uh, Josh Brolin <laughs> character, I don't remember. He wasn't the lawyer. The other guy's a lawyer, right? But they're golf Benjamin. buddies or something. Right. And so it's like, how much does he really know? He just wants to go to the wet, the, the movie West right. and shoot people and ride around on horseback and break people out of prison. And, you know, that's the promise of the Westworld theme park. Watching TV. 
Just want to sit there and watch living, living TV. TV. Living TV. Um, Same thing. That's yeah, what I think he's saying. But I think that the, uh, you know, I mean, like, there, there is issues with the pacing. You know, just being an, uh, an older movie, you're looking at, like, if they cut back to that mission control a lot. They are just looking at screens and blinking <laughs> Talking buttons. Talking about donuts. It's, you know, because you're sitting there going like, well, what does that device do? I can't understand what that device is. They put this little thing down next to a robot's eye and yeah. it lights up. And I'm like, what's it doing? I don't know. It's like in the 70s. Sensors. Yeah. Before, you know, James Cameron came along and basically said, like, I'm going to have a reason for every single piece of technology that's, well, maybe it was Ridley Scott or, you know, the designers, right? Yeah. You had like the Sid Meads and all these guys who were like, if I'm going to have a sci-fi door... That's going to be a door that fucking fully is functional that way that I design it, you know? So I don't think you had that back then in, in, in 1973. So Yeah, most robots look like big circles, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I think you have to take that into consideration when you watch the movie. But if you can look at it as like a piece of uh, history, you know, I think it is still, it functions as, a, as an entertaining movie. And, uh, you know, it is relatively, even though we're saying it drags, it is relatively quick. It's only, you know, an hour and a half. Mm. So I would definitely recommend it. I mean, just for its place in cinema history, West World. Yep. So next week, we're going to be watching Travis's movie pick. And Travis still hasn't figured out what it's going to be. Oh, this is, we're getting into Halloween. And we're going to have a special feature for you, ladies and gentlemen. We're All this month, each one of us on our pick night is going to tell you what we think is the top 10 horror 15. movies. That's 15, 10. Top 10. 20 horror movies. Jesus. Our <laughs> We're just going to list horror movies until you stop listening. Favorite. So that'll be like a little around. special thing on each of the upcoming episodes through the month of October. But our first one is going to be Travis's. It's coming out next week, and it's going to be the movie. We're going to watch The Bad Seed. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Sean looks shell-shocked. He was expecting something else. I was. And that's until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.